he's an absolutely fantastic author to have on the list. Where these have just got his name quite small, uh, we then go with Peter as the big branding now. We're incredibly proud to be publishing him still 20 years later. I was found by Macmillan um, because I wrote a short story in a magazine called Fear and somebody at Macmillan read that, wrote to me and said, uh, can we see what you're doing next? So I sent them in the manuscript for Mindstar Rising um, and on the basis of that they, they bought the book and that was 20 years ago. It is part of the family now, just going into the office is very comfortable um, and of course all my backlist is still in print, it's, it's been a good relationship. We've been publishing Peter now for, uh, it will be 20 years next year. I've worked obviously on his last three books, all of which have been bestsellers, I'm proud to say. Nothing to do with me, all to do with Peter, but um, it was a hugely exciting um, um, project for me was to be able to, to work with him on them as a fan as much as an editor. To start with, editing was, was all done on paper. Um, it's now done on screen, which I kind of miss printing out a book at the end of the process. It was, it was the final full stop, if you like, having the pile of paper. Uh, this is the only one I could actually find, uh, which is the original copy of the Nano Flower. This, I think, was, was printed out on a dot matrix printer, so you can imagine how long this would have taken. But this, this is how it used to be done, going through it page by page like this. Nowadays, it's a lot easier. It's a lot um, quicker doing it on screen. The notes come through digitally, they're sent back digitally, the, the time is saved. Um, but I do miss this because this is how I started doing it. I start a novel with hopefully an original idea. I then work out what universe to put it in, what kind of society it'll be, what level of technology, how many planets, uh, and from then on you work out the history, the backstory of each of those planets. Then I start thinking about, well, who am I going to have to tell the story? So then the characters come almost last, actually. Then I'll start on the chapter outlines. When I finish that, then I'll sit down and, and start page one, chapter one. It sounds a romantic profession, but it's actually, um, you have got to be quite disciplined about it. You have got to do the regular hours. Peter is a total professional when it comes to his writing. He takes editorial direction very well. He also gets involved with the covers and provides a lot of input so that we get the artwork um, absolutely spot on. So for instance, I mean, we went back and forth quite uh, a long time with the helicopters on the covers of Great North Road, just because we wanted to make sure they were absolutely correct to what his vision of, of the technology at that period was. Here's the covers probably from the last couple of decades and you can see how the covers have evolved where these have just got his name quite small. Uh, we then go with Peter as the big branding now. I think the biggest challenge always is the size of them normally. A wraparound image that goes over the spine it creates its own problems. You obviously need all the text to read, you need the spine to read. You know, normally you just concentrate on the front but with these you've got to make the whole thing read but also try and keep an amazing big piece of artwork. All the new covers now by um, Steve Stone. He's done them all for us and in particular this, this is probably still a favourite when we got three covers to join together. Peter writes very long books um, which can present some challenges for us. His latest book, Great North Road, uh, is actually twice as long as the average book that we produce so we look for a thinner paper to make it a bit of a more manageable object once it's finished. On this occasion, the paper that we sourced, we managed to reduce the spine width um, by one centimetre, which doesn't sound like that much, but actually makes a big difference when you've got thousands of Peter's books piled up together. Now with the advent of e-books, things are starting to diverge a little. I'm looking forward to maybe producing some stuff that's a bit more interactive, stuff that on the e-books has some additional content even. So there will always be straight literature books, that's never going to change. But I think we're going to see a whole new avenue opening up of, of how people interact with, with literature, with words, how it's put across to people, how they can influence it even, how they can follow it through various storylines. To go DRM free means that for us and our readership, they can download 
their ebook on any of the devices they have. And for a readership that is so technologically involved and so loves their gadgets, you know, we, we just feel that that's really, really important, that if you buy it on one device, you can actually read it on all the other devices that you own. The platforms are always obviously going to change. So once you've bought the book DRM free, you can just, you can hang on to it. You don't have to rebuy it, which is a great step forward as far as I'm concerned. The next books I'm doing will be the Chronicles of the Fallers, which is taking people back into the Void trilogy. And I'm going to start writing those at Christmas time. So the first one should be ready for publication in 2014. Peter's readership is not just science fiction and fantasy fans that read him. There's, I think there's also quite a mainstream readership. Over the 20 years, he's built himself into being one of the, the most prominent and most successful science fiction writers of our time.